And so we'll read this important message from our sponsors. The following Zoom session is being recorded and will appear later today on my YouTube channel, Math with Mayo. When you participate in the Zoom meeting, if you do not wish for your picture or your name to be made public, please leave the video off and use an alias name. If you have questions during the meeting but do not wish to speak, email me at bmail at ybcc.edu and I will respond as soon as I can. Okay, so today, ultimately, we're going to cover section 9.3. But first of all, are there any questions from yesterday, section 9.2? No, I don't have any questions. All right. Daniela? No, I haven't been able to look at it. Oh, OK. All righty. So you might have some questions later, in which case, email me. OK, well, we're going to take a look at 9.3, which is simplifying and combining radical expressions. OK. What is the square root of 4 squared? Two? No. Wouldn't it just be four? Yes. <laughs> What's the cube root of two cubed? Is it two? Yes. What's the fourth root of seven to the fourth? Seven. What's the seventeenth root of four hundred twelve to the seventeenth power? Four hundred twelve. There you go. Okay. Because. <laughs> If the index matches the exponent and the base is positive, these two undo each other and the base comes outside. Or in general, we could say the nth root of a to the n equals a if a is greater than or equal to zero. What? The nth root of a to the n equals a. So in other words, if the base is not negative, the index and the exponent undo each other. Now. If the base is negative, it, it'll still work if the index and the exponent are odd. But if they're even, then it doesn't work, right? So let's say I've got the square root of 28, OK? And I want to simplify it. Now, what do I mean by simplify? The answer isn't going to look nicer than the, than the original. But what simplify? Simplifying a radical means take everything that's inside and get as much as you possibly can outside. So move everything you can to the outside. Well, if I take 28 and I write it as 4 times 7, okay, which is still 28, I could then separate it into the square root of 4 times the square root of 7. We looked at that rule. Uh, I think we looked at that rule. You know what? Wait a second. My bad. <laughs> I'm all confused because the Math 93 class is a section ahead of you. We haven't looked at that rule yet. Forget that. We're going to get there. OK, let's look at the rules. Sorry. These rules you actually already know, but you know them in a different form. Let's say we have a product raised to a power. We would attach the power to each factor inside the product. Are you all right with that? Yes. OK. What if, so like if we had 3x to the fourth power, this would be 3 to the fourth, x to the fourth, or 81x to the fourth, right? Yeah. OK, now, let's say we had ab to the 1 over n power. That would be a to the 1 over n times b to the 1 over n power. Wouldn't it be? We're just taking that outside exponent and applying it to each factor inside. OK with that? Yes. Now, let's take 
this and let's change it into radical notation. This would be the nth root of the quantity AB equals the nth root of A times the nth root of B. Do you see that? Yes. All right. Now let's go back to this problem. So now can you see why I can write that like that and also write it like that? Yeah. Why would I want to do that? Because what's yeah. the square root of four? Two. But the square root of seven stays inside. So what did I do? I took the square root of 28. And by simplifying the radical, I took the factor of four and took its square root and kicked it outside. So now I only have a seven inside. So two square roots of seven is the simplified form of the square root of 28. Again, the answer doesn't look simpler, but we've got less inside the radical. All right with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's look at some more of those. Nine times the square root of 54. My index is a two, so I'm looking for squares. 54 is nine times six. So I could write this as nine times the square root of nine times six, which would be nine times the square root of nine times the square root of six. Okay, which is nine times, oh, what's the square root of nine? Three. Three. And then times the square root of six, so I get 27 square roots of six. So nine square roots of 54, equals 27 square roots of six if we simplify it. Okay. Cube root of 40. Well, now our index is a three. So now we want to uncube cubes, 40 is eight times five. Eight is a cube. What's the cube root of eight? Two. So we get two cube roots of five. So the cube root of 40 simplifies into two times the cube root of five. So far so good? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's take a look at the square root of 50 x squared. Well, 50 is 25 times 2. 25 is a square. So I could rewrite this as 25 times 2 times x squared, which I could write as the square root of 25 times the square root of 2 times the square root of x squared. Okay, what's the square root of 25? Five. What's the square root of x squared? The square root of x squared? X. Right, now, I didn't read this to you, I should have. It says all variables represent positive real numbers. So in this case, we're not worried about absolute value bars. But there's your answer, okay? Now, I wanna go back and do this problem a slightly different way, just to save some time and space. Rather than take it and break it apart into separate radicals, I'm just gonna do this. What's the square root of 25? Five. Where is the five? Outside. The square root of two, no can do. What's the square root of x squared? X. Outside. So I've got the outside and the leftovers inside. And there's my answer. Just a little less writing. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's take a look at this one. The square root of 75 b to the eighth c. 
Well, 75 is 25 times three, okay? 25 is a square. B to the eighth is B squared times B squared times B squared times B squared and then times C, okay? So do you see where I got the four B squareds? Yes. All right. What's the square root of 25? Five. What's the square root of B squared? B. 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 And I've got the square root of three C left inside. So I've got five B to the fourth square root of three C. Now, here again, I'm gonna do this problem a second way to show you that we don't have to do quite that much work. Let's consider b to the eighth power. What's the square root of b to the eighth power? b to the fourth. Good. Um, what's the square root of b to the ninth power? Well, that doesn't come out nicely, does it? What we need, we need the exponent inside to either match the index or be a multiple of it. So if I had the square root of b to the ninth, I would rewrite it as the square root of b to the eighth times b. The square root of b to the eighth would be b to the fourth, and I'd still have a single b inside. Let's see if you see what I'm doing there. So what I would do, oops, is this. I would leave b to the eighth as b to the eighth because eight is a multiple of the index, all right? What's the square root of 25? Five. What's the square root of b to the eighth? b to the fourth. And left over, square root of three c. So. All right, with that, that's the, the shorter version of doing it. But I do a longer version to show you, hopefully, why the shorter version works. Yeah. Plus, if I gave you the chocolate cake first, you'd never eat the broccoli. So I have to give you the broccoli and then the chocolate cake. All right. And then there's always somebody that says they don't like chocolate cake. And I say, fine, eat all the broccoli for yourself. All righty, let's take a look at this one. The fifth root of... 64 x to the 10th y to the fifth. Okay, now 64 is 8 times 8. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, so I've got 2 to the sixth power, which I could rewrite as 2 to the fifth times 2 to the 1. Why did I take this and break it up like that? Because I want exponents that either match the index or are multiples of the index. So now I've got this. 10 is a multiple of five and five matches the five. What's the fifth root of two to the fifth? Two. What's the fifth root of X to the 10th? Would it be x squared? What's the fifth root of y to the fifth? Y. What's left inside? A two. And there you go. Two x, two x squared y, fifth root of two. Don't forget to write your index if it's anything other than a two. That's a common mistake. People forget to do that index. And while I'm at it, in WebAssign, if there's a, a, a a button that gives you that, and there's another button that has this. I think it's a function key. It's like over to the right side. You want to use, if you're using the fifth root, you want to use this one so that you can put the five in there. Because if you use this one and you write five, blah, 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 it's going to mark it wrong. And I had a couple of students that were extremely frustrated. They couldn't figure out what was wrong. They were using this when they should have been using this one with a little index box. So be sure you choose that from the right-hand menu. And I believe it's under the functions menu. Okay. All right, and if you have issues with that, let me know. Okay, second rule. Again, this is a rule that you already know, but you know it in 
this form, hopefully. A quotient raised to a power, you attach the power to both the numerator and the denominator of the quotient. So if I have two over x cubed, that's two cubed over x cubed, which is eight over x cubed, okay? Now, what if I had a over b to the one over n power? That would be a to the one over n, all over b to the one over n power. But if I convert that into radical notation, this says the nth root of the quantity a divided by b is the nth root of a divided by the nth root of b. Sorry that my a's look like nines. Okay. So that means if we have a quotient under a radical, we can split them up. And we actually did that the other day. I just didn't formally talk about it. Let's say we've got the square root of four ninths. You can write that as the square root of four over the square root of nine, and then deal with the numerator and the denominator separately. Okay. You can also go, this could go this direction. It can also go back the other way. All right. And we'll look at both those cases. Let's say we have the square root of three fourths. Well, that would be the square root of three over the square root of four, which is the square root of three over two. Now, don't confuse that with that. This is the square root of three halves. This is the square root of three divided by two. So the two is not inside the radical, entirely different. Watch out, be careful, okay? Uh, let's see here. We have the fifth root of two over 243, which would be the fifth root of two divided by the fifth root of 243. Now, 243 is three times 81, which is three times nine times nine, which is three times three times three times three times three, which is three to the fifth power. Why is that nice? because on top I've got the fifth root of two. What's the fifth root of three to the fifth? Three. Three, ta-da, see how nice that is? Maybe you don't see how nice that is, okay. I just finished copying down what you have. Okay, all right, I will slow it down. Okay, I'm good. All right, I'm in speed up mode because my last class, they had a lot of questions. And so I was like zipping through trying to get them all answered, but I will just chill here. Okay, and if I forget, you remind me, say, Mr. Mayo, slow down, slow down, take a chill pill. All right, now, let's say I've got the sixth root of five y to the 12th over 64. So that would be the sixth root of 5y to the 12th over the sixth root of 64. Okay. So let's take 64 and let's break it down into its prime factorization. 64 is 8 times 8. 8 is 2 times 2 times 2. The second eight is two times two times two. So I have two to the sixth power. So now my numerator is the sixth root of five y to the 12th. My denominator is the sixth root of two to the sixth. So far so good? Yes. What's the sixth root of two to the sixth? Two. And that two is outside. Now, let's take a look at the numerator. I can't do anything with the sixth root of five, but what's the sixth root of y to the 12th? Y squared. And that would be outside, and then the sixth root of five. So we've got y squared, six roots of five, all divided by two.
We good to go on that one? Yes. Right. Yeah. Good, 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 good. Let's say I've got the square root of b to the fourth power over 64a to the eighth power. So again, I could separate that into two radicals, the numerator and the denominator. Sorry, that's a b, believe it or not. OK. What's the square root of b to the fourth? b squared. What's the square root of 64? 8. What's the square root of a to the eighth? a no. to the fourth. Correct. There you go. We've been taking fractions inside of radicals and separating, separating them into two different radicals. Let's go the other direction now. Are we good to go on? Yes. Let's say we've got the square root of 500 over the square root of 5. Since we're dividing two radicals with the same index, we can put them together as a single radical. Why do that? Because now I can go inside and reduce that down. And the square root of 100 is 10. Are we OK with that? Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you another way of doing this to try and convince you that this is the best way, OK? I could also do this. In other words, I could factor out that, take the 10, kick it outside, and then these would reduce out. But looking at it, doesn't this look like this is a little nicer to work with? And if you're not convinced, fine, do it the second way. I don't care. They both work. They both work. All right. Um, how about this one? The square root of 75 y to the fifth over the square root of 3y. So this becomes the square root of 75 y to the fifth divided by 3y. I could reduce that down to the square root of 25 y to the fourth. 75 divided by 3 is 25. y to the fifth divided by y to the first power is y to the fourth. We good to go on? Yes. What's the square root of 25? Five. What's the square root of y to the fourth? Y squared. There you go. Good. OK. We good? Yes. Yeah. Here comes another one. Cube root of 243x to the eighth over the cube root of 9x. Now, I need to point out again, the only reason we can combine them is because they have the same index. If they didn't have the same index, we couldn't just put them together like that. So this becomes that. Let's see, 243 divided by nine is 27 x to the, what, seventh? Okay. Okay. I'm gonna rewrite that as the cube root of 27 x to the sixth times x. 27 is a cube. X to the sixth is a cube. It's x squared cubed. So now I get a three x squared cube root of x.
there are three big important ideas in this chapter. Rule number one, you can't take an even root of a negative number. Rule number two, when you take an even root of a positive or zero number, you can't get a negative answer. Rule number three, the nth root of a to the n equals a if a is greater than or equal to zero. And that last rule is what we've been using here. Okay. Now, what's 2x plus 3x? 5x. 5x. What's two square roots of five plus three square roots of five? Five square roots of five. Right. This is what we would call combining like radicals. Okay. What's 11 square roots of three plus two square roots of three? 13 square roots of three. Excellent. What's 30 times the cube root of six minus 10 times the cube root of six? 20 to the cube root of six. 20 cube roots of six. So far, so good, right? Easy peasy. Ah, uh, now life gets more complicated as it always does. Nine plus the square root of 45 plus the square root of 20 plus 16. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take each radical term and simplify it as much as we can and then go back and see if we can combine things. Right now, I can see that the nine and the 16 can go together to make 25, but let's take a look at the square root of 45, okay? Well, 45 is nine times five. And the thing I like about nine is it's a perfect square. What's the square root of nine? Three. So now I get three square roots of five. Okay. The square root of 20 is four times five, four being a perfect square. What's the square root of four? Two. So I get two square roots of five. Okay. So I took the two radicals on the inside, simplified them both. Now I can combine them. I get 25 plus five square roots of five. And there's no hard, fast rule as to which to write first, but I think the author tends to write the nice one and then the radical second instead of the other way around. It isn't wrong the other way around, but they, they tend to do it that way. All right, with that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The square root of 20 plus the square root of 125 minus the square root of 80. Well, 20 is four times five, so this would be two square roots of five, right? One twenty-five is twenty-five times five, which would be five square roots of five. Eighty is sixteen times five, which is four square roots of five. Now I kind of had a clue from this first one. It's like, oh. Maybe they're all going to have the square root of five left inside. That isn't always true, but that's what I was kind of looking for is thinking, okay, how can I break that down into a square and a five? Oh, yeah, I can do that. Nice. So now I get what seven minus four is three square roots of five. Okay. So if you were to use different products to get the numbers instead, would you still get like the four square root five? Like say you were to do 20 times five. Okay. Actually it'd be 20 times four. All right, times four, yeah. All right. Now, but 20 breaks down further, doesn't it? Oh, there's my 16 again. In other words, if I just did this, 
I wouldn't be finished because I can simplify that further because 20 has a square as a factor. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Okay, let's, let's expand on that idea a little bit. Eh, come on, eraser. Here's worst case scenario. In other words, you break it all the way down and then you build it back up into exponents that are twos or multiples of twos and leftovers. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So if you don't see the perfect square factors, you just keep breaking it down and then you can build it back up if you need to. Oh, okay. All righty. Um, let's see here. Six cube roots of five Y plus three cube roots of five Y would be what? Nine cube roots of five Y. Excellent. Okay. Now, put on your life jackets. We're going into the deep end. The square root of 18T plus the square root of 300 t minus the square root of 243 t. The assumption we've kind of made up to now is that all those radicals are going to work out to where they simplify and go together. Not always the case as we shall see here. All right. So 18, I'm going to go 9 times 2 times t because 9 is a perfect square. So this gives me 3 square roots of 2t. Okay, so far? Yes. All right. 300 would be 3 times 100 times t. Why did I break it off that way? Because 100 is a square. This would be 10 square roots of 3t. Oh, look, already we don't have a match, do we? Minus, minus. 243 is 3 times 81 times t. And again, I'm kind of shortcutting getting to the perfect square as we looked at a little earlier. If you didn't see that, you could just break it all the way down and then build it back up. So this is going to be 9 square roots of 3t. Oh, these two are like terms. So I'm going to get 3 square roots of 2t plus 1 square root of 3t, and I don't need to put that implied one in the front there, okay? I could put it there, but it's just fluff. It's not necessary. Okay. Good with that? Yes. All righty. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Two cube roots of 16 minus the cube root of 54, minus three cube roots of 128. Now my index is a three. So let's see here. 16 is two times eight. Oh, eight is a perfect cube, isn't it? Now let's say again that I missed that. Okay, then I go here and I do this and I'd say, oh, that's that, okay? So then this would be two cube roots of two cubed times two, which is two times the cube root of two cubed is two cube roots of two. So I get four cube roots of two. So if I broke it down and saw that, oh, uh, this is a cube and that would give me a two. If I don't, I can take it all the way out like I'm doing there, you follow? I always forget that you can't see unless I write it on the board there. I've got my pen moving around, but you can't see that. <laughs> so far, so good? Yes. Can yeah. you mind doing another example of that, please? Oh, I'm not done. I'm going to do two more of the same thing. Okay. But then if you want more after that, absolutely.
Okay, 54 is two times 27. Oh, 27 is a cube, isn't it? Okay. Yeah. So this is minus the cube root of 27 times two, which is minus three cube roots of two. Okay with that, Daniela? Yes. 128 is two times 64. 64 is a cube. Oops, that's not what I wanted to write there. This is three cube roots of 64 times two, which is minus three times, what's the cube root of 64? Four. So I get that. All three of those are like terms, four of them minus 15 of them would be minus 11 cube roots of two. Now let's go back here for a minute. Let's say you didn't recognize that 27 was a cube. Well, you'd go two times, three times nine, two times, three times three. Oh, two times three cubed. By golly, 27 is a cube. Here, two times, eight times eight, two times, you got a whole bunch of twos there and you get two to the six times two and there's your 64 because that's a multiple of the index. Is that making sense? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Let's do another one of these. Um, let's see. The fourth root of 32 plus five fourth roots of two minus four minus one fourth root of 162. So now my index is a four. So I'm looking for something to the fourth power or to the eighth power or to the 12th power, okay? 32 is two times 16, which is two times four times four, which is two times two times two times two times two, which is two to the fifth, which is two to the fourth times two. So I broke it all the way down, built it up to a power of uh, four and leftovers. Why did I do that? Because the fourth root of two to the fourth is nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, that sounds good. Next one, fourth square roots of two, or the, not fourth, fourth root of two, I can't do anything with. So this basically is simplified as far as it's going to be. Okay. Yeah because I can't take the two inside and break it down any further and get some something to do with the fourth power. Now, 162 is two times 81, which is two times nine times nine, which is two times three times three times three times three, which is two times three to the fourth power, bingo. Fourth root of two times three to the fourth power. What's the fourth root of three to the fourth power? Three. And left inside, the fourth root of two. Ah, all three of them are like radicals now. Two of them plus five of them is seven of them minus three of them is four fourth roots of two. How are you doing? Good. All right. Um, let's see here. Hmm. What's the square root of 21 plus the square root of 21? Two 21? Two square roots of 21? There you go. Mm -hmm. What's the square root of two plus the square root of 19? can't do anything so you can't be simplified. 
because two doesn't break down and 19 doesn't break down either. Okay. What if you had this instead? You had the square root of two plus the square root of 18. Well, now this doesn't go any further, but this would be what, nine times two, which would be three square roots of two, which would give you four square roots of two. So the, the 19 doesn't break down, but the 18 does. Prime factorization. with that yes how about this yeah. one okay cube root of 27 minus five cube roots of eight let's see oh is 27 a cube yes so what's the cube root of 27 three three is eight a cube Yes, two. Gave me that? Yes. All right. Uh, let's take a look at this. Let's see. Square root of 27. 27 is 9 times 3. Square root of 9 is 3, so we get 3 square roots of 3. Okay. Oh, square root of eight, eight is four times two. So this would be minus five times two square roots of two. You following? Yes. Yeah. And I can't do anything more with it because they're not like radicals, are they? Hmm. Ah. Let's see. Consider this. The square root of five times the square root of 10. Now we're multiplying. We've been doing this. We've been taking this and splitting it up like that or splitting it up like that kind of thing but we can also go the other direction. So this would be like the square root of 50, right? Yes. Yeah. Which would be equal to the square root of 25 times two, which would be five square roots of two. Okay. See how I got there? Yes. Let's yeah. look at a different way of doing this problem. I could do that. So I could take this, pull it apart, pull it apart, and then those together would be five, wouldn't they? Just giving you some alternatives. And later on, we'll, uh, I think it's in fact, yeah, tomorrow we'll look at more of that, like, well, we can do it this way, or we can do it this way. And it's kind of, you know, your preference. All righty. Well, lady and gentlemen, I shall 